Jeremy Hunt is an active U.S. Army officer. He's a leadership strategist for the Douglas Leadership Institute, and he joins us tonight. Uh, Mr. Hunt, thanks a lot for coming on. It's great to be on with you. It's great to be on with you. It just seems to me the reason I want to do that segment was I feel like there's a lot of, to be blunt, racial tension in America, and I, yeah. and I want to make sure that everyone with a public voice is doing his or her best to to make it better. And part of that means treating people as individuals rather than as caricatures, I think. Absolutely. I mean, and of course, everything I say on the air is just my personal views. Uh, I, I just find it incredible that here we have a law professor spewing out such divisive rhetoric, uh, stoking fear. I mean, when I was young, my father taught me just the basic principle. He said, me, especially as a Christian, that I should love my neighbor regardless of their race, that I should strive to live in harmony with, with, with people regardless of what they look like. I mean, these are basic principles that people learn in grade school. How is it that at 24, I'm having to tell a law professor? Sir, uh, not to make these general, generalizations of, of entire groups of people. It does seem like that is that is the line. I mean, you have to keep alive the possibility that just because people look alike doesn't mean they're they are alike. Do, do you know what I mean? I mean, I look like I guess there are exactly. a lot of terrible white people through history. I'd hate to take responsibility for their crimes. Do you know what I mean? I want to take responsibility for what I do and not what anyone else does. That seems fair to me. Exactly, and the more we and the more we kind of engage and entertain these conversations about how oh the you know the entire groups of people are racist, the more we're actually playing into the hand of actual racists. I mean, if you're a white exactly. supremacist in this country, you're guaranteed news coverage. You're, you're guaranteed to talk about all these great things, and we play right into their hand. I mean, they are we are basically carrying out their goal of a divided United States uh, when we see pieces like this come out in the New York Times. I mean, it, it is mm -hmm. deeply disturbing. When, when did we start believing in collective guilt? You're responsible for things done by people you've never met. When did that become exactly. a concept? I thought the whole point of America was that we don't believe that. Well, exactly. And basically, after if you look at after the civil rights movement, the, the new kind of protest politics, they took on this new line of basically uh, everyone's going to fill this collective guilt and we're going to trade you uh, some type of moral authority uh, in exchange for making you feel better uh, about your guilt. I mean, it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's divisive. And instead of viewing people uh, based on the content of their character, we're still seeing this, uh, this kind of movement to, uh, to try to uh, basically make displays of, of social justice and make displays of, oh, we're helping, uh, you know, the inner city community or whatever it might be without actually looking to see if these policies are, are, take, are actually having a positive effect in our country. Yeah, it's creating wounds that will not heal for a long time, unfortunately. Mr. Trump, thank That's you very exactly much. That's exactly right. Good to see you.